Where is Nikola Vlasic? What's going on with Nikola Vlasic? Where's he gone? At Stamford Bridge, we rotated the squad ahead of the Frankfurt game. We left out Bowen, Antonio, Lanzini, Declan Rice, and he still couldn't get into the team. Now, obviously, he's not going to replace Declan Rice, but I think you can make a case for him replacing one of the other three. Three first-team sort of attacking players left out, and he still didn't get into the team. Then against Arsenal, we still leave out Antonio. He still doesn't get into the team. Saeed Ben Rama gets in ahead of him, which I'm not complaining that Ben Rama started ahead of Vlasic. I'm just more questioning... Where is Vlasic? He didn't even come off the bench in either game. Both games were resting players ahead of the Europa League semi-final and he still doesn't get into the team. And it's just not worked out for him. Now, during the Arsenal game, I started to convince myself that David Moyes surely did not sign Nikola Vlasic. Surely Vlasic is not a signing sanctioned by David Moyes. Well, I'm going to discuss that because I flipped between the two and I'll probably flip between the two between the video. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and do drop a like on the video. But let's go back to August when we signed him. Because I think with the benefit of hindsight, and it is only with the benefit of hindsight, I'm not pretending I claim this and I did it. I'm claiming it today and today only. With the benefit of hindsight, there's probably one or two clues back in August that perhaps this wasn't a David Boy signing. The first clue being, we signed him on transfer deadline day. That's never a good sign, really. I know we call him Dithering Dave, so on and so forth, and have a little bit of a laugh. But at the same time, we know Moyes is quite, I, I guess, organised, if you like. That I'm unconvinced that David Moyes, at the start of August, didn't know who he wanted. Then by the end of August, with no football being played, he would have chosen to go for Nikola Vlasic. Well, that's untrue. Vlasic actually played a few games for Moscow um, at the start of the season while in Russia. Got an assist. He's had three assists this season, Vlasic. One was for CSK Moscow. Anyway, so we signed him on deadline day. I think that was probably a little bit of a clue that perhaps this wasn't the number one target. We know who the number one target was. It was Jesse Lingard. But I guess the question is then, how far down the list was Nikola Vlasic? Was he number two? Was he number three? Was he number five in the list? What was he? Was he even on David Moyes' list? I'm not convinced. We made two permanent signings last summer. Obviously, Ariel and Kral came in. And I'm aware Kral came in on deadline day as well. But he was only on loan. And I've always felt from that day, unlike this one, from day, from day one, I've always felt Kral was a signing of opportunity that come deadline day is available on loan. It's, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll take him. We've had a little look at him, decided not to pursue him. But if he's available on loan, low cost, we'll take him in. It's a little bit of squad depth, gives the manager the option. If it works, happy days. If not, we haven't really lost much. I would have paid a million or so to have a, an experienced centre midfielder in the squad for the season. So that one I'm sort of happy to discard, if you like. But the Vlasic one, we did that on transfer deadline day. Now, two parent signings, Kurt Zuma, Nikola Vlasic, both for big money, 25 billion each. And I'm aware the fee for Vlasic is disputed that it could only be 18 million. It's still 18 million. It's still a lot of money. It's still a waste of money. It's still been, you know, you only buy two players. You've got to get them right. You've got to make sure that they're both Kurt Zuma style. Kurt, we signed Kurt Zuma. And here's the other clue. He went straight into the team. Bang. And he went. Replacing Craig Dawson, who had a good season last season. Craig Dawson hasn't just come good this year. He was good last season too. But as soon as Kurt Zuma was ready, had the Claret shirt on, bang, Dawson out the team, Zuma's going in. 25 million we've spent, we're not wasting that. In he goes next to Obona, and it worked, it was a good thing to do. But we didn't really have that with Vlasic, did we? It was a bit like, well, you can just wait, actually. Now, I sort of get it, at the start of the season, we were scoring goals, we are playing good attacking football. He started his second game for West Ham, which was against Manchester United. And then, Premier League... I know we'll talk about Europa League in a minute, but Premier League wise, so he started against Man United and then he didn't start for the next 15 games. The next 15 games, he did not start. He was coming off the bench. Some games he wasn't coming off the bench. He was just sat on it doing nothing. In some of those sub appearances, I think three or four of his sub appearances this season is two minutes or less. So he's come on right at the deck. The Watford game, just after Christmas in which he scored, he came on with five minutes to go. And so even his some appearances have been limited in terms of minutes. Games that he's just not going to do anything. When you bring him on for two or three minutes, it's just it's purely to waste time. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with subs to waste time. I get it. It's an important thing to do. 
But what I'm saying is, when you look at Vlasic's appearances this season, he's made 18 in the Premier League, only six of starts. But out of those 12 subs, you can discard a third of them. Just put a, put a line through a third of those sub appearances because they're not really. It's not really an opportunity for him. It's it's a t- team game at the end of it, and that's what he's doing. He's there doing something at the benefit of the team and not to benefit Nikola Vlasic. He's not getting sensible game time. Anyway, let's go back to August. I'm, I'm aware it's a bit bitty, this video, but stick with me. There was one big clue in the summer, which I'll be honest with you, I was not aware of. I didn't know about this until this morning. I started Googling it. Because the reason I started Googling it is because I've sort of convinced myself that this is not a David Moyes signing that means there's only one man that signed him, and that's David Sullivan. And we all know why David Sullivan is persuaded to buy certain players, isn't he? He's led, if you like, and tends to be led by agents. You know, the Saeed Ben Rama one is the perfect example. We know Moyes wanted Eze. Moyes has told us he wanted to sign Eze that summer, but he went to Crystal Palace and he got Saeed Ben Rama. We all know who Saeed Ben Mama's agent is. It's, it's uh, Will Salthouse, a mate of um, David Sullivan. So out of curiosity, I decided to see just who Nikola Vlasic's agent was. And it's um, Tonchi Matic. No, I never heard of him. So anyway, I started Googling the agent to see if he has any links to West Ham. Has he done any dealings with us in the past or anything like that? How do we know of this agent? Now, I didn't even get that far. I gave up after the first article. The reason being, I Googled... This agent name followed by Nikola Vlasic. The standard stuff. I'm very, very thorough in my investigations, as you can see here. So once I googled it, the top result was um, Nikola Vlasic. I've off. I've offered him to every major Italian club, and this was August 2021. So I thought, oh, okay. So I clicked on it, read it, went back, read another article. So basically, his agent had told the world that he was trying to get Vlasic to a club, and that he'd offered him to all the major Italian clubs, including Napoli. He was trying to get him into AC Milan. And it made me think, this guy was... This agent was just touting Vlasic out all summer. Trying to get him a big money move somewhere for... I assume to fill his own pockets as well as look after his player. And make, get his player, not necessarily out of Russia, but just a, a big money move somewhere. Get him to a better club in the Russian league. Help his... I say help his Croatian careers. Croatian careers, fine. He doesn't need help for the national team. But that was another alarm bell. I thought, okay, so... It's not like we... It almost sounds like... He, the agent, has approached us and said, my player's available. But that happens all the time in football. I'm not disputing that. It's probably how we sign Kral. I wouldn't be surprised if David Sullivan got a phone call and said, Kral's available, that guy you wanted, he's available on loan. And we said, yeah, we'll have him. But it's a bit different, a loan signing and a £25 million pound signing. It's a bit different, isn't it? So that's another alarm bell. There's another one here. I'm clutching at straws now, but just hear me out. I'm desperate to make my case here. Is... Um, He's already had a shot in the Premier League, hasn't he, Vlasic, at Everton when he was young. And he was young. So when we signed him, I gave him the benefit of the doubt. I spoke many times that actually it could be a good thing. We know he's used to England. Moyes will know he's used to England. So in terms of settling into the country, he shouldn't have a problem. He's just struggled to settle into the Premier League, but wasn't really given a thorough chance. Everton fans felt like he wasn't really given a fair crack at the whip there. Um, some things don't change, do they? So I gave him the benefit of the doubt and said, oh, well, he was young, we'll put down to that. But then I started thinking over the last couple of days, would David Moyes think like that? We know how particular David Moyes is with this character test, this MOT test thing that he does on players and on their mentality, so on and so forth. He does everything he can to ensure that the player's likely to fit in and settle in at West Ham. So would Moyes discard... That, like I have as a fan, I've gone, oh, well, we'll give him benefit of doubt he was young. Would Moyes think like that? I've almost convinced myself he wouldn't. I think Moyes would probably see that as a bit of a warning rather than a good thing. So I've almost convinced myself over the last few days that David Moyes probably didn't sign Nikola Vlasic. Because surely if he did, he'd be hell-bent on making Vlasic a success. And I don't think he is. There has been occasions where he could have played this season. There has been occasions where... He could have had more game time off the bench. We've been needing a goal and he sat on it. Um, Frankfurt, last Thursday's a prime example. We needed a goal against Frankfurt and we never saw Vlasic. It's just frustrating because let's be honest with us ourselves here. And I know some people think this already. It's probably our biggest mistake this season. 
signing Vlasic. Now, I'm not writing Vlasic off. I'm not calling Vlasic a bad player or anything like that. Quite the opposite. I think he's a good player. I've defended him. For those that watch this channel for the season, well, no, I think there's a player in there. But that's based on what I've seen for Croatia, not for West Ham, which is not good, is it? But we spent... 18, 25 million, whatever, on this player. We signed two players permanently all season. He was one of them. He had to be a success. He just had to be. And because he hasn't been, we have struggled a bit. We have felt the negative side of it not quite working out yet, which is in games we should be able to rely on him. But for whatever reason, Moist feels like he can't rely on him. There has been games where Antonio's needed drop, but we haven't dropped him for whatever reason. Well, we know why. Because we don't have adequate replacements. Now, if Vlasic was performing well or we'd spent the money better and got a different player in, then we would have been able to probably drop Antonio, rest Antonio. We'd have been able to use this player, a other player, better than we've used Nikola Vlasic. And this signing has really sort of cost us big time, if you like. And I know the January transfer window is there as well. And I'm the first person to say we should have signed someone. However, had the Vlasic signing worked, we wouldn't have been in that position in January. We were only in that position in January because we spent 25 million on Vlasic and it hadn't worked out. Now, he had his fair crack in European football. I will give Moyes that. He started every group game bar one. Has, um, started the first knockout game in Sevilla, didn't he? But he hasn't played any other games since that. However, we signed him as a number 10. Now, was he to directly replace Jesse Lingard? I think you can make an argument for it. We we had Jesse last season. Obviously, went back to Man United. I think we spent too long pursuing him in the summer. I think it was naive. Um, I don't. Wanna, I'm not trying to blow my own trumpet here, but I knew we weren't getting Jesse Lingard in the summer because someone from Jesse Lingard's team told me there's just no chance, man. You give you him, and in January it was the same again. Which is there's just no chance, man. You give you him. Turns out, man, you did the right thing. They've now secured six ahead of us. Had we got Jesse Lingard in January, he'd have fancied us finishing above Man United this season. So actually, Man you've done the correct thing, not, not letting us have Jesse Lingard. Whether it's the right thing or the wrong thing, in regards to loyalty or lack of loyalty to Jesse is a, a different issue. What's best for Man U is, it's probably what they've done, actually. But if we had pursued him all summer, it was a bit stupid by us. But is Vlasic a replacement for Jesse? Well, on paper, and it is on paper, I'm trying to find a bit of paper to hold up. On paper... They both play in the same position, the number 10 role. That role, there's there's some similarities between them, um, but there's also a lot of differences between them as well. And this is where I can't quite convince myself that this is why Moyes picked Vlasic, because if you're not going to get Jesse Lingard, you go get the next best thing, don't you? The next player that's like Jesse Lingard, and Vlasic ain't that. He's not that similar to Jesse Lingard for 25 million as well. I'm not too sure. Anyway, I made a few notes. Now, bear with me while I just scroll through to make sure I've read all my points out. Um, but what I basically said, in to go on to the player ratings for the Arsenal game, is Vlasic has wasted a, a season, a year of his life, football life. He's 24 years old now. He can't afford to be sitting on the bench at this age. He can't be. He's too good. He's too expensive. And when I say too good, again, I stand by it. I think he's a good player. He may become a success at West Ham next season, but... What I will say was, I felt like we saw Ben Rama more last season than we have Vlasic this season. And there was frustrations with Moyes' sort of like, let's call it patience, with Ben Rama last season as he eased him into the team. I'm not even sure if Vlasic has had that this year. Um, would, would we miss him if we sold him? Probably not. But one start, I've had a look, one start Vlasic has had in that number 10 role this season. He started it for us one game that was against Tottenham in the cup and guess what we got an assist so he's had three assists this season one for CSK Moscow one when he played attacking midfield for West Ham which was his only game starting in that position and um, the other one I don't know didn't write that down but three assists that, this season but my point is two of them's a bit obscure isn't it anyway that's all I've wrote down that's all my um, my notes I briefly wrote down for this one so to summarise I still think there's a good player in Vlasic um, but I'm just not sure we'll see it at West Ham and I'm just not sure David Moyes was the one that brought him here and if Moyes wasn't the one that brought him here then I kind of get why he's leaving him out I think it's a bit petty it's a bit cut your nose off to spite your face but at some point the, the, the culture at West Ham has to change the, the David Sullivan getting involved has to stop 
And we know it didn't stop two years ago when Ben Rama arrived at the club. It was well documented that David Sullivan was the one that sanctioned that move and pushed it on David Moyes, essentially. Has he done it again with Vlasic? Well, if he has, and it is an if, I don't know, this is just my theory. If he has, then I get why Moyes is stomping and making a statement saying, no, I'm not playing him. I did it with Ben Rama and I'm not doing it for Vlasic because if I do it and I make it work, you're going to keep doing it. You're going to keep on getting involved. You're going to keep buying players. And these are not cheap players. Ben Ram was 25 million and Vlasic was 25 million. It was 50 million of wingers Moyes has had that I don't think he wanted at the club. We can't afford that. We cannot afford to be doing this. Um, I would argue that, you know, the last two seasons, who's our biggest waste of money, if you like? Felipe Anderson? Well, at least we had a good season at Felipe, didn't we? Yes, it didn't end well, but at least we got that good season. Sebastian Haller? Well, at least we got goals out of him. At least he scored some goals and contributed. And then when we sold him, we recouped 20 million, which was a bad sale. And the fact we don't have a sell on cost, but I've dealt with that in another video. But they were bad signings, but at least we got something from them. Vlasic? We've had one goal. That was against Watford in a 4-1 win, um, which got given to him on the plate. I feel sorry for Vlasic. This, like I said, this video... In a weird way, is it meant to be a dig at Vlasic? It's not even meant to be a dig at David Moyes. I, like, I'm like i trying to say I get it. I get why Moyes won't play him if he never signed him. However, if Moyes did sign him, and then the frustration lies at his door because we've not seen enough of Vlasic. We've not given Vlasic a fair crack, and I think there has been opportunities. In regards to sort of no youngsters this season, let's say at least say, I think Sunday against... Um, Arsenal was the first opportunity we could have played Elise this season in the Premier League. The first one. Every other game prior, I think it would have been difficult to put the youngster in. No, actually, sorry, Chelsea. I think there was an opportunity to play the, him there. But I get why we did what we did with three at the back. So in the last couple of weeks, that's the first time Moyes could really have put in Elise in. So I'm not going to blame Moyes for us not seeing Elise until the last couple of weeks. But with Vlasic, there's been opportunities. There's been plenty of chances to put him in. And some of the games... He has looked poor, stuck out in the wing or whatever. But I'll tell you what, there's also been some games where I think he's actually played quite well. I think he's done well enough to justify being left in. But it can't be good as a player where actually you get a game, you play reasonably well, and then you're back on the bench again. You need to be able to build up a bit of momentum, a bit of form, get your confidence up. I don't feel like he's had a fair crack. Is it because Moyes didn't sign him? Well, in the last few days I've convinced myself that is the reason. Maybe I'm giving Moyes too much of the benefit of the doubt, but regardless, whoever signed him, it's not worked out, has it? And it's been actually a big part of why I think our squad depth is not, not as good as it possibly should have been. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think. I'm going to disappear. My voice is breaking for whatever reason. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, drop a like on it, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. I'll catch you in a bit.